Hello, and welcome to the People's Mental Stimulus Update. Well, in today's broadcast, I actually have a little bit of slight stimulus news that might interest you, but I doubt it's going to happen. And then I also got a bit of COVID-19 news before I get into what my thumbnail says, Democrats versus Republicans. And that's actually worth hearing as well, because I've actually researched all my information to give you guys, and I think you might find it interesting. But to start off with, we got stimulus news. 21 Democratic senators have written a letter to President Trump, uh, Joe Biden to basically request that he extend the um, stimulus checks and make it a re monthly recurring thing until this pandemic is over. And now whether he actually acts upon this or not at this present time is unknown because you know his main concentration right now is on the infrastructure bill. And if President Joe Biden was actually a bit, uh, you know, more money educated, he'd realize that if he actually legalizes the cannabis market in all across the United States, that the cannabis market could make billions and billions of dollars for the federal government so they wouldn't have to worry about raising taxes on the rich or raising taxes on the poor because they have all this excess money coming in yearly that they could use to strengthen our infrastructure. And that is basically um, what is on the stimulus news. So I do know that if, if Joe Biden does urge the senators to do this, they're going to have to use reconciliation. And they only have two more reconciliation acts to use this year. And the only reason why they have, they'd have to use it because the, the past stimulus pa uh, package that actually passed the America's Relief uh, Plan that gave us a $1,400 stimulus check was only passed by the Democrats. The House Republicans and the Senate Republicans did not vote in favor for it. In fact, they all said no. So basically, if they want it, it's going to have to go through reconciliation, which is going to use up one of the two remaining chances they could, they could use to pass a bill this year. So if anything comes of that, I will be more than happy to let you guys know. But now on to COVID news. Apparently, the COVID-19 strain that is currently out that came from Europe is actually expected to get a lot worse in nine months. In fact, here in the United States, we already have 27 states that are recording record high, well, daily record high, outbreaks because their mayors or governors, which are Republicans, decided to remove the mask mandates. Our governor here in Utah has removed the mask mandate as of April 10th. And I hate to say this, but uh, our governor and all the rest of Republican governors are a bunch of idiots because, come on, we were asked for to do it for 100 days. 100 days is a month away. Exactly one month from today. We can, get out, we can stop wearing these masks by request of the president. But like I said, I mean... They're expecting that in the next nine months that the there will be a new strain of COVID that will basically be quite resilient to the current uh, vaccine we have out there and that they're going to need to have phase, a phase two vaccine to take care of that current that new strain that's coming out in about nine months from what they suspect. And they also have four theories of where COVID-19 came from. The first one was, is it came from a bat and went into a human. The second one was, was that it went from a bat to another animal and then into a human. The third one, and this is the most stupidest one I could ever, that I've ever heard. It came from frozen food. Yeah, that's right. You heard me. They're saying COVID-19, one of the theories is it came from frozen food. And then the final and fourth theory is the fact that it was man-made in China and it got out of control in one of the laboratories and that's how it escaped. They're suspecting that it came from a bat. That's their that's an important choice as far as where it came from. So we'll see. We'll see what they have to say about that because you never know with them, right? But like I said, I mean, my whole topic now is on to Democrats versus Republicans. The Democratic Party is the oldest voter-based political party in the world and the oldest existing political party in the United States. 
Democratic Party was known as the party of the common man as far as the Indian Removal Act of the 1830s. And what the Indian Removal Act was, was that actually repopulate the Native Americans of this land from where they were to reservations somewhere else. And as you see, that's basically what they did. And we need to give it back to them, but that's another topic. And the early Democratic Party stood for individual rights and state sovereignty and opposed banks and high tariffs. I don't know what tariff is, but I'm guessing taxes or something like that. During the second party system from 1832 to 1850s, the Democratic Democrats usually uh, bested the opposition, the Wig the Whig par uh, Party, W H I G. I'll tell you what the I'll give you the definition of what that is, is a bit later if you stick with me. By narrow margins, from the 1860s to 1932. The era of the American Civil War and Great Depression, the opposing Republican Party organized in the mid-50s from the ruins of the Whig Party. Basically, the Whig Party got disbanded, they ruined. And some other smaller splinter groups was dominant in presidential politics. So basically, the Whig Party and a few other small splinter groups basically formed the Republican Party. In 1896, election uh, election marked the political um, realignment in which got something in my face. Sorry, the Republican Party controlled the presidency for 28 of 36 years. The Republican Party dominated most of the um, Northeast, Midwest, and half of the West. And what the Whig means is the Whig Party is is a member or supporter of a American political party. Formed about 1834 in opposition to the Jackson, Jackson Jacksonian, sorry, Democrats. Assessed essentially with uh, manufacturing and commercial as well as financial industries. So basically, the Republican Party just wanted, uh, like I said, they just want more interested in manufacturing, commercial, and financial in, in industries, basically, and they succeeded about 1954 by the Republican Party. So the Whig Party became the Republican Party, basically what it is. The Jacksonian Democrat is the idea of spreading political, yeah, this is the long end, sorry, political power to the people and assuring majority rule as well as supporting the common man. So basically allowing common Americans to have more influence in the political process. In fact, it was the Democratic South that became Republican. The Democratic Party was the party of slavery and Jim Crow. And the Republican Party was the party of um, emancipation. Yep, that's what it says, emancipation. And racial integrity. Integration, sorry. Democrats were the... Confederacy and the Republicans were the Union, but in the 1960s to 1970s, everything flipped. Suddenly, the Republican be, Republicans became the racists, and the Democrats became the civil rights, or so the story, what I want like this. Republicans could not win a national election by appealing to the better nature of the country, but they could win by appealing to the worst this was attributed to Richard Nixon, which is was at that time the media's main all-purpose bad guy. This came to be known as the Southern Strategy. So basically, I just gave you a bit of history on both the Republicans and the Democrats. So basically, as you do know, the Republicans and the Democrats flipped. The, they used to be one party, all Democrats, and then they basically... Splinter celled, and you still have, you still have it, the Jacksonian Democrats, but then you also had the Republicans that were splinter groups as well as part of the Whig Party. And so basically, now you know that now the Republicans actually are the sort of racist um, part of a political party, as well as the Democrats are the ones that are actually out trying to help the people out 
as well as our country. Because as as you see, when President Trump was in office, the um, taxes on the rich dropped from 28% to 21%. And now that Biden's in office, he wants to raise the taxes on the rich and corporations from 21% to 26%, and the Republicans are complaining about it. And he says he wants to do this for our infrastructure bill. So you decide. Let me know in my comments, actually, tell me to tell you the truth. Whether you would rather go with the Democratic ideas or Republican ideas. Any comments and all comments are welcome. I will not judge you. That's not my job. Never will be. My job is to inform you of what I learn. And so you can learn as well. And on that note, I think I'll end my video and say I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. And please stay safe out there. Bye. Yeah. I got this feeling inside my bones. You win the club, just to party I'm there, I get paid a fee It's Friday night and I won't be long Till I hit the guns fly, hit the guns fly I'm living out in L.A.